Hi guys, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiatoria. So Martin Ostwick of the English Martial Arts Academy just uploaded a video which I've just watched um, talking about why he believes that uh, English backsword in uh, quotations is better than British military sabre. Um, this, um, I'm not very good at raising one eyebrow but if I were, I would have done it a lot during this video. Not simply because I do British military sabre and I teach it, um, but actually just because there's lots of things in his video which aren't really correct. Or at least they're, mis they're misleading, shall we say. So I made some notes, that's what this piece of paper is for. Um, I'll go through the points that, uh, as he went through his presentation, came to, came to me in the order that he addressed them in. So the first thing is he immediately started talking about um, backsword system, English backsword system being better than British military sabre. Well the first thing is to say this is a bit like to me it kind of rattles, it's like when people talk about German longsword and Italian longsword. The fact is that actually what we're talking about here is a load of different masters who all wrote treatises down and uh, some of them are related and some of them are not very related and there isn't one English backsword system. If you're talking about George Silver, well, what about Swetnam? What Swetnam does only 15 years later, you know, he's in the same in the same generation practically, is completely different to George Silver. Completely different. In fact, what Swetnam does is quite like later Sabre. Uh, equally, what about Zachary Wilde 100 years later? Completely different, or pretty different to, to Silver. There's some common features, but pretty damn different to Silver. Um, in fact, what you could say what Wilde is doing is perhaps a bit more similar to later Backsword. Uh, so if we're looking at uh, Thomas Page, for example, again, completely different system. Um, and actually, so you've got a range of different British Backsword systems that range from the 16th century right the way through the, to the end of the 18th century. And then what do you get? You get Highland Broadsword. What's Highland Broadsword? It's just an evolution of British Backsword system. Yes, it might have some quirks that are particular to the Highland Scots, maybe, maybe not. There's some debate around that. Paul Wagner um, from Australia has written some interesting stuff about it. I know Keith Farrell and Ben Carr, my friends are in Scotland, have got various views on it. But if you look at Angelo, for example, or, um, or Roworth uh, and John Taylor's lessons, it has a, a relation to British backsword stuff. And do you know what? Do you know what they are? They're the beginning of British military sabre. So fundamentally, the first thing I would say is, first of all, you can't generalise about British backsword or English backsword because there's a range of different systems and they're all really quite different to each other. Secondly, British backsword became British sabre. They're not actually very different things at all. Okay? So the next thing that um, Oz, that Martin Ostwick said, was that um, British military sabre apparently has less cuts, thrusts and guards uh, than backsword does. Does it? So in, in sabre we've got uh, between six and eight cuts which describe every possible angle, okay? And the guards that we've got are numerous. In fact, every guard that you've got in George Silver or Joseph Swetnam or Zachary Wilde is in British military sabre. So in actual fact we have exactly the same, or potentially even more, cuts, thrusts and guards in sabre, in British military sabre, than they did in backsword. Which, you tell me, which cuts and thrusts uh, are, are in, which cuts and thrusts, which, are atta which attacks are in uh, British backsword sources which are not in a sabre source? There aren't any. It's, it's a very similar system. Um, Easier to learn. Um, the the ac sort of accusation that British military sabre is easier to learn than British backsword. My argument would be it's not necessarily easier to learn. It's just better codified and better explained. One of the attractions of 19th century sabre systems is they're extremely developed and well explained. It, the numbered cuts are a good example of that. What do you say? What do you have to say in George Silver? What do you call a cut? from the right hand side downwards, or you call it a, a, a downright blow from the right, or we could call it a cut number one, or uh, well, we could call it a downright blow from the left, or from my inside line, or cut number two. The numbered cuts and the numbered guards and the numbered stances with the feet are there to convey information in a much more effective and efficient way, and they do that and that enables quicker learning.
we don't learn quicker because the system is simpler, we learn quicker because the method for teaching us that system is far more efficient. Numbered cuts, numbered guards, numbered stances, foot positions are a good thing. It's why I use those very same numbers when I'm teaching longsword. It's not because Fiore Delivery used these uh, numbers in any way whatsoever in his longsword system, but everybody can understand. If I say give a cut number two to the person's right leg, give a cut two at the lead leg, easy, okay? Numbered cuts are good sense. It's why they're also used in Filipino martial arts, incidentally. Um, so the next thing, which is, I think, has some credence to it, is about closing and grappling. Yes, some backsword sources, or some, some sources that describe the use of the backsword, have uh, some decent information in them on closing and grappling. However, a lack of knowledge, Oz's lack of knowledge of British military sabre systems, is where his point falls down here. Because in actual fact, closing and grappling is dealt with in British military sabre, um, but it's dealt with in conjunction with fighting against someone using a bayonet. Now against someone using a bayonet, predominantly you want to try and grab the person's musket or rifle and close with them because they have the advantage of range. So in actual fact, you're, you do, if you study that part of, that aspect of British military sabre, you learn all of the closing and grappling moves through that. And not only that, but a certain uh, Captain Alfred Hutton, someone who I believe that Oz has probably heard of, actually wrote a system of grips and closes based on George Silver's own treatise. Uh, and this was also used by Cyril Mathy, his friend Captain Cyril Mathy. So, in actual fact, to say that there's no closing and grappling in military sabre is complete rubbish, because it's there from the start in opposing bayonets, and that's the context you learn it in, because it very rarely happens sabre against sabre. The sabre is generally a shorter and lighter weapon than the backsword, and closing and grappling happens really comparatively little. Okay, if you're a good swordsman, why grapple? You want to cut someone down with a sword. If you've got a sword, learn how to use the sword well. Don't try and punch someone to death, okay? Because then there's no point in having a sword. Um, if someone closes with you, yes, counter grappling, counter gripping is very important to know. However, if you've done the saber versus bayonet lessons, you'll know how to do that. If you've studied Hutton, you'll know how to do that. Um, so the uh, next point, oh, and just one final point on that. Um, is that not all backsword sources have closing and grappling stuff in them. Okay. Um, moving on to the next point, uh, Oz makes a point about the, the garden fight, variable fight and open fight. This is George Silver. Okay. This d isn't included in other backsword sources. So um, at, what we find is, so the garden fight, fighting under a guard, whether it's here or here, that is in Military Sabre, okay? A hanging guard is an absolute standard guard, whether you have it in weight, looking over the arm, which would be bastard guarded in, in George Silver, or whether you're looking under the arm, which is essentially similar to what's done in loads of backsword sources, uh, which is preem, or hanging guard, is in loads of backsword and loads of sabre. It's the same, okay? So garden fight is the same. The variable fight, believe it or not, that would be pretty much equivalent to sabre fencing from terse or medium, as found in uh, Hutton or any of the Italian sabre stuff, or in um, uh, parts of Angelo. Angelo gives an option of going from hanging guard or terse. So it, it's... That's a, that's a complete misnomer. The, the so-called garden fight and the so-called variable fight are there in British military sabre right from the beginning. Because, of course, it comes from backsword. It comes back to my original point. Sabre is just an evolution of backsword. It's just a more developed... It's a slightly shorter, lighter version of the backsword with less hand protection. So that changes the nature of the fight slightly. But essentially, it's a very, very similar system or set of systems to the set of backsword systems that came before it. It developed from backsword. Um, and the open fight, well, open fight is in Bolognese what would be Guardia di Alta, fighting from Guardia di Alta. It's not a different type of fight, it's just a different starting position. If you look at Bolognese fencing, they've got, you know, they've got, they've got the same guard positions as George Silver has. They're just starting positions and you can do different things from them, they have different strengths and weaknesses. It's not a completely different type of fight. Um, fighting from an open ward, yes, it is not in Sabre, however, it is not in the late backsword stuff either. It's only in the earliest backsword stuff i.e. George Silver.
It's not in Zachary Wilde, it's not in Thomas Page, it's just not there. Uh, so it's not there in the late backsword stuff, it's not there in the Highland Broadsword stuff, at least not the late Highland Broadsword stuff that we know about, and it's not there in the early Sabre stuff or any of the Sabres, because the fundamentally fighting from Guardia di Alta or Open Ward is not something that's very useful with a military Sabre. It just, it just doesn't make any sense. It would just be a quick way to die, basically. The only time that I might use something like an open ward with a military saber is against perhaps um, against certain types of pole arms potentially, but it's just not something that's very useful with that weapon. Okay, and I would also say that generally speaking, I think that the open ward comes largely from the spirit, uh, the sword and shield or sword and buckler fight. Um, I don't think it's particularly, although Morozzo uses it with the sword alone, I don't think it particularly lends itself well to a one-on-one -on -one fight uh, with single swords with no accompanying weapon. Um, certainly we don't find it in later period, we don't find it in rapier for example, because obviously the rapier wants to keep the point online. And it's a similar thing with sabre as well. Um, on that topic I would also say that comparing backsword and sabre you can't ignore rapier, so you have to remember that right the way through the whole period when backswords were in use, in George Silver's period, the rapier was a more popular weapon across Europe than the backsword was. Okay? Uh, in the 18th century, for dueling, the small sword was a more popular weapon than the backsword was. Uh, backsword retained a certain degree of uh, popularity in the military, for obvious reasons, it's a more uh, practical military weapon than the rapier or the small sword is, but in one-on-one -on -one fight, the rapier and the small sword seem to have held their own. Um, and when you look at Sabre, whilst the Sabre is largely developed and taken from, at least in Britain, from earlier backsword systems, so late backsword is very similar to early Sabre, you have to remember the learning that's coming from the uh, rapier and small sword systems as well. And a lot of the way that the Sabre is used is used to accentuate the use of the point more so than in backsword. Okay, so the backsword doesn't make as much use of the point is you probably could or should be doing with a, a normal type of sword, kind of an average one-handed sword, and the sabre, because of its different type of um, uh, hilt setup, is more um, is more capable of giving varied thrusts than a backsword hilt is. A backsword or basket hilt um, means that you can only thrust from certain angles. You can't you can't put your thumb up the back of the hilt because up the back of the grip and you can't put your finger over the quill on because you don't have a quill on, you, can't, you don't have space to put the thumb up the back. So it's difficult to get the point online in a straight thrust with a basket hilted sword. Um, so the sabre is actually more capable as a thruster than the back sword is, and that changes the nature of the guards and the game somewhat. Um, so when talking about what is and isn't in the military sabre systems, there is actually a lot of stuff in the military sabre that isn't in, really in the backsword systems to do with thrusting and thrusting in opposition and such like and that's taken directly from rapier and small sword fencing so you could actually say that the sabre, military sabre, is a bigger system than, than earlier backsword is um, and finally I would say, and this is a kind of challenge, if early backsword, remember that I've said that late backsword is essentially the same as early sabre it's what the two systems are connected. That's why the earliest Sabre manuals from 1796, 1797, 1798 are referred to as combining Austrian Sabre and Highland Broadsword. Highland Broadsword is just another name for a type of backsword. It's a basket hilted um, cut and thrust sword. Um, uh, if, if you think that early um, backsword is a better system one-on-one -on -one, in a one-on-one -on -one fight um, than Sabre, then prove it, because current evidence suggests, based on competition results from around the world, that uh, Sabre and Rapier are better systems for the one-on-one -on -one fight, for the dual type fight. Um, and, you know, until we see some early English backsworders really winning lots of competitions, which they're not at the moment, then sorry, but your point's a bit, um, a bit hollow. So there we go, the proof of the pudding's in the eating, and I suppose there's a, the gauntlet is thrown down, and we expect to see some good early English backsword winning some, um, winning some sabre competitions, because, you know, just the other day I won a gold medal in a backsword competition by using sabre methods, so. There we go, so make of it what you will, guys. I'll post the link to Oz's video that I'm responding to below this one. Cheers!